morning, everyone. The topic we'll be covering today is turnover. I know many of us cringe when we hear that word, right? Because that's something we face, all of us face in this room. Um, but Eric and I have some tips for y'all today that you can take back to your center. Just as a background, I'm the administrator at Avalon Health and Rehab, a 90-bed center, a traditional SNF. And Eric is an administrator at Northridge Health and Rehab, a hospital-based SNF. So no matter what setting you're in, these tips can help you. Over 70% of people leave their jobs because of the way they are led. <clears throat> Outside the box recruiting, online tools. Today's environment with Twitter and Snapchat, everybody likes instant gratification. And with the, in, with the Indeeds and career builders, we get a flood of, of new applicants every time we open up a new posting, but we take several days to a week to respond. We need to respond to these online applications within 24 hours um, to let those persons know that we're serious about, their, about hiring and getting people on board and finding the right people to fit our company culture. Also, on these online applications, there's new ways of finding new applicants. You have the ability to now search actual resumes and postings from people who didn't actually apply to your position. And we found that when you actually reach out to a CNA or an LPN or a registered nurse and actually tell them you found their online posting, you read their resume, they feel, you feel like they're a good fit for your organization, it really makes them feel well and it really gives them another opportunity to know that, wow, these people actually found me online, looked at my resume, and felt like I was a good fit for their organization. Um, it really breeds a, a, a culture of, we want to find the best people, and they feel like we're one of the best people, or as we would call them, a diamond in the rough. Also, don't be afraid of old associates. Many of us, people come and go, we, we, we hire people, and we don't have such success with that. But we decided to use a screening process of using our, st our top performers to look at some of these old associates before we actually called them to see if they were interested in coming back to Northridge to make sure that they would fit our current company culture, to make sure that they were a good CNA, LPN, nurse, housekeeper, floor tech, et cetera. Um, and then we actually reached out to those individuals and we asked the question. Do you want to come back to Northridge if there was an opportunity? That way we could gauge them to see if they even wanted to return to our community. We all know the interview process is very important. You want to make sure during the tour process that you're paying attention to their interactions with yourself, your staff, especially your residents. Um, for example, I had, an, <laughs> I had a potential associate. I pretty much had to drag him along. Needless to say, he did not get hired with me. <laughs> but you really need to make sure that their interactions are going well because those are the people that are going to be taking care of your residents. A lot of times I think we don't go with our gut. Um, I'm guilty of that myself. We know when we feel like it's going to be a good fit or not. Um, with those open positions we become anxious and we try to feel too quickly, but as many of my colleagues have already talked about this week, make sure you're feeling the right person in the right seat. Moving on. Type processed orientation, make sure that the first impression is the orientation process. So if it's not organized, it's not led properly, that's the first impression you're giving your new associates, how the center operates. You wanna make sure that the process is timely and each department head is going in, doing their part and presenting. It's a valuable tool is the exit interview, um, post orientation. This gives an opportunity for you to gauge how the orientation went, where the shortcomings were, and also breeds an environment of no excuses because that person had an opportunity to voice how well they felt orientation went, where there were some shortcomings, and if they need additional training or information with regards to any policies or procedures that's relevant to their job. Um, and also make sure that they're ready to hit the ground and hit the ground running. And it breeds a culture of empowerment for our associates because then we know that this is a partnership, this is a team, um, and we wanna make sure that they're successful upon exiting orientation. Also, it gives them a feeling of investment because if we talk to them about orientation and we ask them how did it go, it makes them feel like they're a part of the team and that we wanna make sure that they are successful when they hit the ground and and making sure that they have all the tools they can have to be successful in their new role at your organization. 
focus on retention, empowerment as well. Um, and this is talking about empowerment of current associates um, that you have in your building. Uh, we have involved our associates in recruitment. We take them to job fairs. We actually, as, as a new interviewee comes in, we just grab someone off of the floor and invite them into the interview process. Uh, so that, so that they can feel like they are part of bringing on new associates. And it also helps us welcome new associates because they may recognize the person that was in their interview. And it also gives them an opportunity to give us feedback on new associates um, to help reduce our retention. I mean, our turnover, excuse me. Also, in our mentoring program, we actually turned the entire mentoring program over to the mentees and let them develop the entire program so that when we bring on new employees, the mentors actually understand the program, know exactly what the program entails, and we also redistribute the um, rewards that the ment mentors received as a mentee moved through the continuum over time. Um, and we base that on a 30, 90, and 100 day um, bonus structure. That way, the mentor would stay engaged with the mentee, and we all have found success as once someone which is 180 days, they're more likely to stay with our organization. Accountability. Um, make sure information is the key, as we all know. If we don't give them the information, we can't hold them accountable to it. We also stress the acronym THINK before you speak, and that's for all of us in the center. Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? And is it kind? That is something that we really stress in orientation process because we all know once it comes out of our mouth, we can't take it back. So we all need to hold each other accountable. Breeding a sense of ownership, uh, making sure you're giving your associates guidelines, but giving them the empowerment, as Eric has ar already stated, to make decisions to come up with ideas. How can we implement it? If it doesn't work, let's go back to the drawing board. What can we do different? And I think that's, me as a type A, that's hard for me to do. And I think a lot of us are, but that's definitely something that we gotta keep working on. So moving on to results, this is our turnover rates. As when we first started in 2015 to 2016, and as of a three month look back period, uh, we just pulled our numbers yesterday, Avalon's three-month turnover rate is 25%, and Northridge's turnover rate is 13%. So it's definitely proven you have to stay focused on turnover. You have to keep it a priority in your center. And as you can see, retention did the exact thing that we expected as well. Retention is trending in the right direction. We're starting to retain more of our associates, and we're seeing the fruits of our labor through the mentor program as well. One thing that we all try to do is we try to do everything in our centers. This is a very, very important part of the successfulness of your center, especially clinically. Um, so we, you need to find a champion, somebody that you have identified that will handle this turnover um, and be there all the time and be available. Because as administrators and, as, and, and your DONs, we have meetings, we have outside meetings. We may not be able to respond to all the postings. Um, and, and have them lead the charge because that person will take ownership and they will feel successful when we, through various meetings from all staffs to et cetera, report our turnover information. They will feel like they are really a part of the team and they're making a difference in their jobs each day. Make sure you're separating those duties. Um, we have, as far as we talked about the department heads being involved, make sure each person has, has their duties, make sure they stick to that. Um, I know we all get busy and some, sometimes we deviate from those plans, but the orientation process is the first impression. So we need to make sure we're doing that correctly. Getting associates involved. Making sure that we are keeping them in the loop, being transparent with our numbers. This is our goal that we need to achieve and how are we getting there? What are the steps we're taking? So making sure we're communicating that timely Evaluating new methods, always, always, always self-evaluate. Things change, Twitter comes on, you're Snapchatting, all these new things that our millennials are wanting, we need to stay up to date and current on. And lastly, onboarding. Onboarding sets the expectation and the culture of the center. Be deliberate with the orientation process. 
Be sure to find a champion. We all need to delegate this out to our fellow associates and have them involved in it and find that one or two particular persons to champion this uh, call to action because it is very important to the success of your community. Communicate the results. It's very important to let your staff know where you are in turnover and retention because a lot of times they're surprised that we turn over as many employees. A lot of them are in their own silos as far as shifts, as far as days of work. We try to keep the same groups together so they may not understand that we are actually turning over a lot of individuals. Require ongoing leadership advancement and try that, that means try to bring as many of your line staff into this because they're the ones that's going to be working shoulder to shoulder with the new employees and they're going to be the ones that are really going to make the difference with regards to turnover and retention because we all know we're not working shoulder to shoulder with these individuals. We're more overseers and, and the people that work with them will have, excuse me, will decide whether or not they determine to, to continue to be a part of your team. So even though our theme song was Mission Impossible in the beginning, the mission is absolutely possible. It just has to be at the forefront, be in your QAPI process, and make sure you're hitting it every day. Because as we know, we go every day to do our best, and this is just one part of it. So thank you very much. Thank you.